How you doing today, guys? Today's video format's gonna be a little bit different than my usual, so I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on what's gonna happen here. Uh, the first eight to 10 minutes of this video, I'm gonna basically just talk about uh, what was on my mind that day. So the first eight minutes or so, uh, it's just gonna be jibber jabber. You're welcome to fast forward through that if you're not interested. Uh, starting around 10 minutes or so, I show you a couple tools I use for testing batteries. And throughout the video, a lot of my focus is going to be on some pretty cool tools I found uh, through the years that I wanted to share with you. And then finally at about uh, 13 and a half minutes into the video, we're going to start actually replacing a battery tray. So if you just want to know how to replace a battery tray, fast forward to uh, 13 and a half minutes into the video. Otherwise, I hope you'll just uh, enjoy the ride and enjoy the video. Thanks guys. In a few minutes, I'm going to start doing some more repairs to my Bobcat. Um, but my blood sugar is a little bit low right now, so I'm just drinking some, um, some sweetened tea to kind of uh, to, to raise it up. Um, I've never really mentioned this. I think only one person ever noticed, but um, I am a type 1 diabetic. I have been since I've been 13, uh, and I wear an insulin pump. So if any of you guys ever notice in my videos, uh, you'll, you'll see the, the, the wireless microphone, but uh, you'll also usually see me with a little pouch on my hip. That's not my smartphone, it's my insulin pump. And um, as long as we're just kind of killing time before we get started, uh, I also want to mention that I'm filming this video uh, the day after um, Prince, Prince passed away. And it's funny because I'm kind of getting a little sad as, as I'm saying this. Um, I never really understood Prince, to, to be honest. Um, but I know he had some pretty, some pretty crazy music. Uh, and there's that song, uh, Purple Rain, uh, with that really long guitar, that do, 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 do. Um, when I think of Prince, I can just hear that. And then also there was a song called Little Red Beret. Um, which is the one that stuck out in my mind for whatever reason. Uh, and I'd swear, I would swear there was one time, my sister used to live in Boston, that I went to Boston and uh, I was going around Boston with my sister and, and we went to some party and there was, uh, you know, there was this Prince song playing and, and for whatever reason, that's the memory I have is being in Boston listening to that Prince song. Um, but like I say, I never really understood him. And I remember one time, you know, when he changed... Uh, he changed his name to the artist formerly known as Prince. Um, I, I, I didn't get that uh, whatsoever. And I was just kind of like, oh God, it's just another artist, uh, strange guy. But uh, I gotta say, Prince, you wrote some amazing music and, and thank you for that. What we're going to be doing today is putting the battery and the battery tray back in my Bobcat. What happened is, is uh, I think some of you guys know this, I got the Bobcat in 95 or 96, so it's 20, 21 years old. And I've never stored my Bobcat indoors. I never really had a place to store it indoors. Um, I, I bring it in the garage to work on, but there's just not enough room to, to store it here. So it's funny because when I was thinking about my Bobcat, um, most of the repairs I've been doing to my Bobcat aren't from, from wear or use, they're because it was just sitting outdoors for all those years. Uh, I replaced the muffler uh, last year or two years ago. The, um, not the muffler, but the piece that goes from the exhaust manifold to the muffler, and that was rotted out. And then, uh, you know, one of the bigger Bobcat repairs I did, I replaced something called the bucket positioning valve and a whole bunch of metal underneath the seat, which had also rotted out. And one of the things I'm hoping to do this year is to start um, scraping down some of the rust on the machine and, and, and putting some paint on there so it doesn't get worse. And I've got, I've got a video I want to do about that, but I, I discovered this thing called Core Seal, which what you do is you, you can wire brush the metal or you could, um, you could use like a, a grinder with a, a, a disc on it. Do I have one? They make this disc, I don't know, can you see that? Which is designed to, uh, to scrape the paint. 
So, so you can hit the rust real quick with that disc. I found it on Amazon and make sure you wear a respirator because that disc is very, um, very, it's got uh, a lot of abrasives in it and stuff that once it gets into your lungs, it's not gonna come out. So wear the respirator, well ventilated place, but uh, that disc is awesome. I just want to hit the rust real quick uh, clean it really good, get the grease off it, and then there's this stuff called Coraseal. I just used a, um, a foam brush on to put it on. And the thing I liked about the Coraseal when I was doing my research is you don't have to scuff it up. Once you put it on and go to the next coat, it doesn't have to be scuffed. And it, it's, it went on very nicely. I like it so far. Um, I've used it on the Dingo for some painting and the Bobcat, and we'll see how it does when... Uh, you know, we'll see how it, it holds up to the weather, but, but so far I'm liking Core Seal, and they have like a Core Seal degreaser I've been using too. But it's gonna, uh, I wanted to paint the frame on my Dodge last summer because it's starting to get rusty, and I was looking for something to do about that rust, and I didn't actually take any motion because I spent so much time in analysis paralysis trying to figure out what to use, that by the time I figured out Core Seal, it was a little bit too late in the season. But over the summer, when I start doing work on the truck, you know, when I see patches of, of rust on the frame and whatnot, I'll, I'll clean them off, hit them with the core seal, and then just put some kind of, and I'll probably use just a basic Rust-Oleum uh, to paint the frame. You know, I looked at all the, all the crazy paints out there, and, um, you know, there's, there's Pour 15, and there's another one that's kind of like Pour 15. Uh, but the thing I didn't like about those paints was that you had to do a, between the top coat, between the primer coat of Pore 15, or there's another one which is just like Pore 15. It puts like a glass coat on the frame. Um, you have to do a, you have to scuff it before you put the next coat on top. And that's fine for like big wide open areas, but if you're doing the frame or you're painting equipment, doing some scuffing, it just adds work and, and uh, it seems like a bit of a pain. So that's why I chose not to do Pour 15 and I, I can't think of the name. Chassis Saver, Chassis Saver, that was the other one. Chassis Saver and Pour 15, they, they both seemed awesome but they seemed like they were more work than necessary so I didn't do those. So uh, getting back to the Bobcat, and uh, I guess uh, hopefully this video is coherent. It looks like I'm rambling, but um, I'll be honest, guys. It's a Friday morning. It's a beautiful day outside. Uh, I just finished my first big job of the season yesterday. My body is, is pretty tired. I'm a little bit stressed out because I've been trying to... I've been trying to... Uh, talk to people about work. Uh, I need this Bobcat for a job. I'm starting on Monday and there's just a lot of stuff going on. And besides being mentally more challenged than usual, more is going on. Uh, my body is, is physically tired as well. Um, so that's why we're kind of sitting here having, having tea. And, and, you know, sometimes I'll do this on the way to the job. I'll just stop at a Dunkin' Donuts for 10 or 15 minutes and just kind of chill out. Uh, or yesterday I was doing a job on a lake and it was it worked out really well. I I got to the job and I, I just kind of started walking around the job, not so much look at the job, just to kind of chill out. And uh, it was on a lake and my customer came out and we must have talked for a good 15, 20 minutes. And uh, it was it was beautiful view of the lake and it was very nice to talk as well. The tea is gone and... Um, Maybe we will uh, we'll start uh, talking about what the heck we're doing today here. So, this is the old battery tray, which is probably salvageable. <clears throat> you know, I didn't need to to replace it, but it is uh, it is very nasty. So my thought is is from here on out. Whenever I, here, let me show you this. So there, there's, uh, there's old and new battery trays. Um, and this one still works, but my thought is, is from here on out, you know, every year, 
every year or two years, I'm not using the machine a ton, I'll power wash, pressure wash the machine. Part of my new thing now is I'm gonna go ahead and, excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and, and remove the battery and pressure wash everything around the battery and make sure that there's no rust. For, for whatever reason, the battery acid gets out, starts rotting things, and with both the Bobcat and the Dingo, I've just had some ridiculous amounts of rust on there. So, so what I did is I, I took the battery tray out, I just got all new parts, and, and there were probably some parts I could salvage, but I think I said in another video, when I'm doing work on the Bobcat, if I'm doing it myself, uh, I usually just get new parts, do it once, do it right, and so I got the new parts. So I, I had to lift the machine up, and I removed one engine mount because there was a lot of rust underneath it. So I did get, you know, I did get a new engine mount as well. Uh, and again, this is probably, you know, there's nothing would have been wrong with this one. The saying I use is, is rust begets rust. So by taking this old one out, uh, hopefully I can stop the rust that was forming on the inside of this engine mount. And um, I just, you know, keep the machine lasting a little bit longer. And I, again, I just, I need to figure out a way to store this machine inside or get a tarp or something because it's such a, you know, I can't, aff I can't afford a Bobcat. Uh, things have been slow. There's no way I can afford a Bobcat. And this Bobcat is as good as new. It's just 20 years old. So yeah, it's gonna have some stuff go wrong, but there's nothing that, uh, I'm the, like, the only person ever used it. It's not beat on. And uh, I wanna keep her going um, because it's really nice to have a Bobcat on the job and it's, a, it's paid off and all that stuff too. So for about a week now, I've had the, uh, the battery running on a trickle charger, and uh, the, battery, the battery was installed, it looks like in 02 of 2010. It's now 04 of 2016. So uh, the battery, I got my money's worth on the battery. And um, what I wanna show you guys is, uh, first off, this, this trickle charger is awesome. It's very small, and what you do is you just plug it in and then, uh, to the wall and stick it on your battery, and it, it's not gonna charge it quickly, but it always keeps it charged. Uh, I got this one at uh, Tractor Supply. It was like under 30 bucks, and I've used this for the three batteries in my dump truck uh, over the winter, and it's worked perfectly fine. Uh, so this is a nice little gizmo to have. But this battery, literally within two hours of plugging it in, it went from the yellow charging to green, um, fully charged. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed by that. And I wanna give Donnie Boy credit. Donnie Boy uh, taught me about this little trickle charger. So let's unplug that. So we're working around a battery and I am wearing glasses if heaven forbid something bad happens. The next thing I wanna show you guys is this, uh, Schumacher battery tester and this is another thing that Donnie Boy showed me. What you can do with this guy is uh, you hook it up to your battery and then let me zoom in for you. So this battery is 950 cold cranking amps so you can see the needle without, the, without it attached to the battery and then with it attached to the battery so you see we've got a, a full charge, and, and you see there's a thousand, I hope this is coming out, it says a thousand eight hundred. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a load on the battery, which basically, I'm gonna move my hands, basically heats up some elements in here, and that'll tell us if this needle doesn't just like go right down, the battery's good. If the needle uh, stays, you know, pretty, still the battery's okay. So if we do this, and we're not supposed to do this for more than about 10 seconds, you see how that needle is actually staying in the green zone? So that means that the battery is good. So I'm not gonna worry about it and I'm not gonna replace it. And that was probably as, as long as we should do it for. Uh, so I'm very happy to see that this battery's good. Where we're gonna be working is the back left of the Bobcat. And the battery goes right in here. There's a little compartment in here for the battery. And the engine mount I took off is right here. Uh, so this is our new engine mount. Nice and shiny. And the way this is supposed to work is uh, 
this piece goes on top, this piece goes on the bottom, and you kind of put the two together, and then you put this bolt through, and that's what holds the engine. So the first thing I want to do is get this in here without, um, without crushing my fingers. So I'm pretty sure what I did is, uh, is I just took a piece of wood and I pried on the engine. And, and it's funny, the piece underneath the engine is actually some kind of plastic but the outside is nice and thick metal. You just gotta be careful where you're working. And then we'll see if we can just lift the engine up a touch. Slide that, that's not gonna be as easy as it looked, is it? There it goes, okay, so we're gonna push it up a little bit, not getting our fingers anywhere they don't wanna be. So then this piece should come from the bottom. And I just gotta get that to catch, which is easier, easier said than done. There's a flat side to this bolt, which I guess is what should be pressing against the engine mount, and then there's a curved side, which would be the top. Maybe that'll make a difference. Okay, she's caught. So I bet you that's a three quarter. Come on, scooch Theo. I should get this stick out of here before I go crazy. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> no dents on the oil pan, good. Okay, that's tight. We turned off the shop light over the workbench because the shine was, was just really distracting. But I just wanna show you guys, this is the bolt that I took out of the, uh, the battery tray. And then this is what they, uh, what they gave me at the Bobcat place. And I pretty much knew it was wrong from the get-go, but you can never have too many spare bolts. So I have like a box out back that I keep all my spare Bobcat parts. I'll put this in there. Maybe someday I'll use it. But what I want to bring your attention to is uh, on the back wall over here. When I was like in maybe high school or so, I got this little nut and bolt center from, uh, I think I got it at Northern Tool. Back then it was maybe 50, 60 bucks. It seemed like a ton of money. This is the most handy thing to have in the world. You know, you don't need a giant thing on the wall. This has got most of the standard size nuts and bolts. And uh, if I go through, I, I went through already to look for the right one. But, um, you know, there's the size I need. And that, that sucker is so handy. If, if you have a chance, in Shelton, Connecticut, there's a place called a Nutty Company where they sell things like that. But if you guys have a chance to get one online, you know, get a, a little nut and bolt organizer thing and it just comes in so, so handy. Uh, I have one of those for nuts and bolts. I have one for stainless steel pan head screws. I use them in my international to hold things down once in a while. Uh, I've got a grease fitting one. I've got an O-ring one. And these things, you might not use them for a year or two. But just to have them when you need one, it, it is just so awesome. If you're, you know, if you're into fixing stuff or just into not wasting time. It, it seems inconvenient when you buy it and you're paying like the, the, the grease fitting one, I probably paid 50, 60 bucks for. I got that one at Gempler's. But um, the first time you say, like, geez, I just broke a grease fitting, I need one, and you grab it and you're, you're good to go. 
uh, life is much better. And the other nice thing about those kits, you know, I've run out of, I think I, just the last few years, I've run out of some bolts. I don't, you know, I don't use that thing a ton. But if you run out of something, just go down to the, the store and buy a few more or go to Amazon and order a few more and keep it stocked, you know, when you're getting down to the last few. But, boy, that is so amazingly handy. So now I just need to find, uh, well, it looks like it's got a lock. It's, it had a lock washer on it and then just a regular bolt. So there we go. No trip to the hardware store and we're good to go. And you know, like I said, guys, I'm gonna end up just making part of my maintenance routine to go ahead and, and take this battery tray out and clean out underneath it and hit it with a little bit of paint. You know, if I can do it at least every five years or so, I prefer to work on clean stuff and I'm pretty sure nine out of 10 mechanics prefer to work on clean stuff as well. I'm not gonna call myself a mechanic. I'm gonna call myself a, a tinkerer, we'll say that. So the first thing I wanna do is uh, go ahead and get the battery tray in. And I just want to show you, uh, whenever I'm working on the floor, um, I have this thing here, whether I'm inside or outside, this thing is awesome to put below your knees. Uh, it makes life a lot, a lot better. The first thing I want you to notice in here is you see how, how pocked all this is? So that was some really heavy, scaly rust. And what I did is I used something called a needle scaler to, uh, to take care of that. And then I put on my Cora seal, and then I actually did get the Bobcat charcoal, which is supposed to be sprayed on, but I used, I used a foam brush to do it, and it worked okay. Um, so that's what we got down there. But we're supposed to put these things underneath to level out the height of the battery tray. And then we put the battery tray in there. And... And then our bolts don't go through because of the core seal. Yeah. The other concern I had when I went to the dealer was, uh, this is what the guy gave me to go underneath the battery tray and this is what was underneath the battery tray to level it out. And this thing is, uh, it's too fat, it's too thick, so the battery tray is, uh, is rocking. Now once I tighten it down, will that be enough to... Um so maybe that's what happens, I just have to tighten it down and then once I tighten it down, it doesn't, this doesn't look like it's supposed to rest anywhere else but on these bolts. So I'll just tighten it down real good and hopefully it won't rock anymore. Hopefully that's going to work for us. While I'm in here, I did, I did take a glance over at the belt tension and we're looking good. We will put the shroud back on before we put the battery in. Okay, that's on. So now we want to move our battery in. And it looks like we want the negative to be farther out. I forgot to put the camera on to show you this, but what I did is, is I took the cover off of this thing, took the battery out. 
I put this bracket that goes on the other side where it belongs. So when it comes time to put the cover on the, the battery, all I have to do is pull up and thread it through. So if you're doing this uh, yourself, I'm sure you could thread that through without, you know, after the battery's in, but uh, it seems like it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to put it in beforehand. Um, and then I do just wanna show you, so there, there should be, at the top of this, there should be a, a washer. So here's another little uh, washer kit I have. So, you know, you can see how old this is. I've probably had this one 15, 20 years too. And uh, boy, it just comes in handy. I'll just reach in there. And that's almost the size, but it looks like it's gonna be the next size up. So there we go. So, uh, you know, I just saved a trip to the hardware store right there. Twice so far today with the bolt and with the washer. All right, let's see if there's an easy or a smart way. I'll thread this one through. There we go, okay. Washer. Bolts. Okay. Washer. And I wonder if this is supposed to go under there. Huh. I almost think it would. So. I've already cleaned both the terminals with this. This is a battery cleaning thing. I've already cleaned the terminals with this guy. You just put it over the top. And then I've cleaned this with the other part of the brush right there. So we're good to go on that, but I just wanted to show you this tool. I think it was like two bucks at the auto parts store. The mechanic who works on my big truck showed me this stuff. Uh, three or four years ago, and every time I do a battery now, I always put a little bit of this stuff on the inside so it doesn't get stuck. And then once I connect it, I, I put a good coating on the outside. Uh, it's a conductive anti-seize compound. Uh, and I'm not really sure what it is, but I, I know my big truck mechanic is awesome. And uh, if he does it, I do it. So let's, uh, let's put some of this stuff on. And you're supposed to just put a touch on the battery which will keep it from uh, sticking on there. I think I put too much. Okay. Slide that under. Slide that on. And then I gotta tighten that up somehow. Holy moly. If only I had a gear wrench. My regular viewers may recognize these. These are called gear wrenches. And what happens is uh, you can put these around a bolt and tighten it very quickly and easily. And uh, this is the perfect thing for back there if I get the right size. Okay, once I figure out which way to hold the wrench, I will have this. There we go. Okay, good. And then I'll just put a little bit of this stuff on top. Try to keep corrosion from happening in there. And then cover it with the boots. All right, now I'm gonna make sure I keep this part, these nuts where I can grab them quickly. And pull up on that. <laughs> I 
that one, that one came out, now I'm in trouble. Because that is... It's not good, let's put it that way. So all the effort I put into uh, taking the battery out and trying to line this up was just laid to waste. So now let's see if I can just kind of feel for where that is. I think I got it. Sticking up good. Oh, I've been trying to line it up on the wrong part. All right. Okay. Get the washer on and the nuts. Washer and nuts. Just awkward, right? Maybe with an extension it'll go a little bit better. Okay, maybe with a shorter extension it'll bump into less stuff. There we go. That's the ticket. Oh, what did I just break? What did I just break? All right, so that was just moving into position, right? Good, all right. Okay. So now we need a 3 8 deep, one half deep. The, um, the rods are coming so far up now that it's pushing the socket off the, the bolts. And I guess a uh, Deep socket would have worked from the start. Now we want to snug it without over tightening, which I always have trouble with. So I'm going to call that good. That's not going anywhere. And then we just got to put this guy on. I want to put him underneath the positive. Just looks better to me that way. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's much better. Keep things neat. Just a touch of this stuff. Just use this towel to kind of squish it around a little bit. What size was that? That was, um, was it a half? I think it was a half, right? Uh, 
And we'll just put some of this stuff on top of this one. And I think we're done. So let me wipe off my hands and then I'll pull the camera out of there. Uh, and then we'll just see if she turns over. You know, it's funny guys. Uh, maybe it was just the thought of doing a video because it takes about four times as long to video something. But I was kind of hesitant to get started this morning, but yet again, you know, was, if you just get started, things get done, you know, you don't even have to rush. It's just, just get started. Cause that went together really nice. I mean, I did do some prep work. I had to get all the parts and I probably put about three hours into painting all this stuff. But uh, I tell you, just get started. It's the secret. Okay guys, I went ahead and opened the door and I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it over just for like, you know, 10 or 15 seconds just to show that it actually does work and hopefully there's no sparks coming from the battery because I put the cables on backwards. But um, otherwise I think we're good. Let's go check it out. Well guys, she turned over. So, uh, you know, I guess we're gonna call that one a victory. Um, I don't know if it was my blood sugar, but I'm feeling much more energetic. Maybe just because I, I got through this repair. Uh, wasn't a big deal. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching today, guys, and we will see you soon. Have a great day.